Hi, Kristen. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing amidst the COVIDian age that we're living in? <laughs> I, I am doing all right. I mean, it is always difficult and bizarre, um, but I'm really lucky and I have a home I get to stay in and, you know, there's hope uh, that, that this will come to an end soon, which is really nice. Yeah. And today's a very hopeful day, I have to say. <laughs> Isn't it? It's like, a, it feels, obviously, it's hopeful. It doesn't solve everything, but it's a nice, yeah. it's just nice to feel hopeful. Yeah. And we're here to talk about the new season of Burden of Truth. So yeah. tell me what's coming up in the new season. Uh, what's coming up? Is that what you asked yeah. me? I, yeah. Zoom is always so strange. Uh, yeah, yeah, so much. <laughs> <laughs> so many things are coming up. Uh, we start the new season with uh, um, Billy and Joanna have their their baby and they're kind of facing the realities of being parents and also having you know the jobs and careers that they do. Um, Luna is uh, you know trying to decide what path she wants to take in her life. You know, she's in her twenties and kind of deciding where she wants to go and. Um, and, and all the characters are in kind of pivotal points, as we always are at the beginning of a TV season. So there, there's a lot going on this year, a lot of stories. We're following a lot of different characters and, and the drama unfolds in various uh, uh, arenas. Mm -hmm. And we have some new cast members. Tell me about them. Yeah, um, we've got, <laughs> who do we have? We have so many. Um, so we've got one of, the lawyer that Joanne is up against, um, she is one of Joanna's, uh, in her previous life at, at her father's law firm at CTS, uh, she was um, someone that Joanna was mentoring and, and she's now up against and kind of facing her shadow self, the self that she was and the self that she kind of left behind. And, um, and the two of them have like a a battle throughout the season. Luna's got uh, a new love interest who is also a law student and, and they're um, navigating their relationship and, and how to kind of be close and intimate while they're both so ambitious and driven. Um, and then we've got a bunch of young women that we meet uh, through Taylor's storyline. Mm -hmm. So what was it like filming during with all the protocols and what was that like for you? It was an adjustment. I mean, <laughs> film <laughs> sets are very vibrant generally, lots of joking and laughing and touching and eating in close proximity and and that obviously was all gone. And I felt incredibly safe on set. The protocols were um, thorough and well thought out and made working very safe, but it definitely took away some of that kind of specialness of, of being on set. And it's hard, you know, when you only see this much of people's faces all day long. Um, it's hard to tell how people are feeling. It's hard to connect with people. Um, but at least we got to like be in each other's company and we got to work and and I think that we found ways to laugh and enjoy um, despite the situation. Right. So I only know what it's like in Toronto. What was it like in Selkirk and Winnipeg? Yeah, I mean, in the beginning, Manitoba was in a it was in a really good position when it came to COVID. Uh, that went away. and and so, as time went by, it, it got progressively, the situation with COVID became worse and worse. So towards the end there, we were extra, extra, extra cautious. I, I mean, obviously same as in Toronto, you, you know, you're not going out to restaurants really, although that was allowed at a certain point in time. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it was all just kind, it was similar, but it took longer for Winnipeg and Selkirk to feel as much like it was a serious thing because they didn't get a first wave in the way that in the way that we did. Wow. Okay. So <laughs> last season was very emotional for Billy and Joanna. And this season, I think the relationship feels very lived in, like it feels very realistic in the way it's progressing, especially with motherhood coming in, mm -hmm. um, taking care of the baby. 
um, talking about going back to work, is it too soon? I don't think it was. <laughs> I think a lot of people are gonna have a lot of opinions about that. Yes, as they should, they should. <laughs> yes, for sure. Um, so what was it like progressing the relationship with Peter? It was really interesting. I mean, I love the show in that we get to explore relationships in so many different phases. And particularly for, you know, the two of them with, with the baby and their personalities. And Billy comes from a, a little bit more of a traditional stance and, and Joanna is a lot more progressive in, in certain ways, which is funny because when you look at them, it maybe doesn't, it doesn't seem that way. Um, I mean, she, she doesn't have the same desires. She doesn't see, you know, marriage and, you know, staying with the baby at home as being the, ways that she's going to be the most fulfilled or even the best used. Um, so, so that kind of dynamic and conflict was so interesting. And I, and all the conversations, I don't have children, but all the conversations I've had, you know, with my friends about being a mom, we got to explore all of that stuff, your identity and the guilt that you feel and the pressure to be a certain way. And Joanna struggles, well, you'll discover in the first episode, she was really struggling with breastfeeding and it didn't work for her. And the judgment that comes along with that and the self-flagellation that comes along with that. And I love that we got to explore that on top of everything else that goes on in a relationship as time goes by. Um, and it was wonderful because they love each other so much, but there's just so much pressure on them. And I think that a lot of couples are feeling that particularly now um, with yeah. the added pressure of, of COVID in, in our lives. Um, but even before that, it's just such a, it, it kind of makes you confront your ideas of parenthood and being a woman and, being a career person and, and what that all means uh, in, mm -hmm. in your life. Mm -hmm. I'm also not a mom, but I've heard about the mommy groups, which I love that they explored a little <laughs> bit in the first episode. Yeah. <laughs> like the judgment and like how you have to be about everything. Like, yeah, that's what I hear so much. It's just, it's it can be terrifyingly judgmental in certain groups, which is so unfortunate, but it's like that everywhere, I guess. Right, right. Yeah. Every aspect of being a woman, let's face it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. So what else were you excited to explore as Joanna this season? She takes on a very big case, very controversial case yeah. that everyone has an opinion about. So tell me about exploring that work aspect. Yeah, there's two elements, main elements of Joanna's work story this, this season. And, and one of them is this case she takes on where she is asked by a woman to essentially go after this mining company um, to stop them from taking over her land. Um, and Joanna is fighting for that, but the mining company promises a lot of things. You know, they're gonna bring jobs, they're gonna bring money and, and, and Joanna doubts all of it. And this is the second part of, of the professional stuff for her is that when she was working at CTS and in her previous kind of lawyer life, she was the lawyer for the mining companies and she knows that she did questionable things. And so Joanna is faced in this, in this season um, with the ghosts of her past and she has to look at redemption and, and change, personal change and, and when has she grown and changed to the point that she should be forgiven for what she did in her past? Um, and what does it take to earn that forgiveness? Um, or do we condemn her forever for, for things that she did in the past? So it's a great little exploration of, of what it takes to make amends in your life. Yeah, and I love that the show just builds on so much from previous seasons that it really rewards viewers. They're like, oh yeah, I remember that from past seasons, which yeah. is great. Yeah. yeah, there's some characters that come back from previous seasons this year too that will be really gratifying for people, I think. Yeah, for sure. So in this time, a lot of people are watching things. I know you're very into reading books. So what have you been into? I, I, I read... This is a huge for me. I don't read, I read a lot, but I don't read this. I read seven over like 78 books last year. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know. I know. I read a lot and I loved a lot of it. Um, 
I read some pandemic books that I really enjoyed. I just finished Severance, um, which was amazing. Have you read it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I really yeah. liked it. Yeah. And, I, and I love Station Eleven too. Like both of those books were wonderful explorations. Um, so that, and um, I mean, we're, we're re-watching The Sopranos right now, which is weird because I, I don't know. I haven't found a TV show apart from, I really liked watching The Long Way Up, the Oh, the McGregor. McGregor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just because I miss traveling, and that was a joy to just see parts of the world. So I've been, you know, and I'm in school right now again, trying to oh. slowly get my bachelor's degree that I've been working on for for years. So, oh my gosh, yeah. So that's been really, it's been a lot of home and reading, a lot, a lot of home and reading. So what are you studying? <laughs> um, well, my focus is history, and one of the only upsides of the pandemic in my life has, has been Queens, which is the university that I go to, distance ed, their whole history department opened up a lot of the courses for distance ed students. So whereas I normally only have this much of the curriculum available to me, I now have this much of the curriculum available. So I'm taking like three separate history classes, which I mean, anyone who's taken history knows that it's just, oh, it was so much reading. <laughs> but I have been practicing. <laughs> My brother majored in history, so I remember, yeah. yeah. Yes, <laughs> totally. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So you also work so hard. Your EP, you're the number one on the call sheet. Are there moments that you're really proud of your work this season and then previous seasons too? I am really proud of what we were all able to accomplish as a team. I think we've tackled a lot of controversial and challenging issues. I feel like we've looked at what it means to be a woman and a parent and in a relationship. I feel like I feel like we've been able to delve into ideas that I've never been able to do before in a TV show. And acting wise, I feel like I've done some of my best work for sure. And I, and I feel like I've been able to be a key player in this, in this production. Um, there are a lot of producers on this show, but I do feel like I've been able to grow and learn. And I, and I have such a better grasp of what it, what it means to produce a series. Um, so I'm proud of, I'm proud of all of those things. Oh, amazing. And is there a moment that you're proud of your colleagues' works on screen? Gosh, I, you know, we've got a bunch of young, well, they're not, they're not so young anymore. They were baby <laughs> actors when we started and, and now they're less baby right. actors. Um, but <laughs> Star, Slade, and Anwen Odriscoll um, are both incredible in the show. And when you see their work in this season, they are amazing. And and you get to see their growth and how much they've infused into these characters. And, and, I, and I think they've done an incredible job. Um, and all of the people that have come through, especially this year, we got a lot of local Winnipeg actors because of COVID. So, you know, it, it stops some producers from flying people in all the time. So you get a lot of, you get to see more of the wonderful local talent. Um, and, and we got to see that this year with uh, Teresa and uh, with Victoria, like so good. Yeah. And I love how all the women on the show, they're so good at their jobs. Like yes. on screen, I love that. Like, yeah. I don't think you see a show like that where all the women are just, and they're recognized for how good they are at their jobs. That's true. That's sad that that isn't common, but yeah. <laughs> <Right>? yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're great at their jobs. And this year too, you know, Luna's in a position where she's so smart and capable. She is in a position where she can choose what path she wants to take in her life as a lawyer and she's coveted and pursued and it's just it's nice it's nice to see and I know the fans are super vocal on social media yeah <laughs> so what have been some of the fan reactions that really stayed with you oh uh, you know honestly it's the like really it's the stuff that's really personal for people where they see an aspect of themselves and and they reach out and, and share that with any of us because um, the shows can be very personal. And I mean, Joanna really struggles with a lot of things I think other people struggle with. She has struggled to be open, to reset, reach out, to be vulnerable, to you know reckon with, with who she is in her past. And, um, and I think that really resonates for, for people. And so that kind of reaction is incredibly meaningful. 
I know there was a lot of fan support for your Smallville reunion where you raised a lot of funds for the Ronald yes. McDonald House, which was great. So what was that like? What was the fan support like for that? Do you still get a lot of like Smallville fans? <laughs> yeah. <the network? laughs> yes, yes. I mean, the fan support was amazing. For, I forgot we did that right at the beginning of, of all of this lockdown. Holy man, it's almost been a year. Um, I forgot what yeah, I did that yesterday. Was, I know, it's <laughs> insane. <laughs> It's th their support is amazing and always incredible. I mean, I Smallville was such a big show for people and it meant so much to people that I I definitely will like always have have fans from from that show. That show was so important in people's lives. Um, and those fans are very engaged and very su supportive to this day. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so, so much for your time, Kristen. I really appreciate it. Thank you for Burden of Truth. Oh, thank really you so much. It. Yeah. Thank you.